Good morning, everyone. Respected resource person for today, Dr. Binod Bora sir. My dear participants. We have the sixth day FDP, and today we are happy to say that we have with us a person from the Dibruga University Administration, uh, Dr. Binod Chandra Bora. Sir is an MA and PhD in political science and is presently the joint registrar academic of Dibruga University. Prior to joining Dibruga University, he taught political science in DHSK College, Dibruga, for about 10 years. Dr. Bora has coordinated successful implementation of the semester system in colleges affiliated under Dibruga University. Introduction of choice-based credit system, CBCS, in both the UG and PG level, etc. He is presently engaged in the task of searching for, and for a feasible and effective alternative system in the current pandemic situation, which would be both an immediate and sustainable solution. So I regularly writes on various issues of higher education, reforms, and innovation in education, etc. His area of interest include reforms and innovation in education and alternative pedagogy. We are happy to serve Binod Bora sir as a resource person and today sir will speak on alternative pedagogy in changing circumstances, practical issues and attitudinal perspectives. Over to you sir. Thank you so much sir. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to welcome all the esteemed participants participating from different parts of the country. I would like to congratulate Dibru College Dibrugar for organizing uh, the FDP in this very important juncture of the society. Today, as I have been entrusted uh, to speak on certain issues relating to the alternative pedagogy in changing circumstances, practical issues and attitudinal perspectives. I would like to cover uh, some of the pertinent issues which are very much related to, the, to our present day-to-day -day situation occurred due to the spread of COVID-19 pandemic as well as uh, uh, the stagnancy brought by the lockdown in the last few months, during the last few months. So uh, during my study presentation, in fact, I would like to touch those practical issues uh, we are facing in our day-to-day -day, uh, coordination with the faculty members, the students, as well as the other stakeholders of the society. And I would also try to uh, uh, touch the concerns of the people regarding the future of our education system. Uh, here, uh, I'm trying to share some of the slides, although uh, what actually I'm going to speak are not necessarily covered by the points which are being uh, written in the uh, presentation, rather, I will try, I will definitely take help of the points of this presentation to uh, speak what actually I'm going to uh, present before you or what I'm going to submit before you. Presentation to be shared before you. Alternative pedagogy in changing circumstances, practical issues and ethical perspectives. Then what is the changing circumstance? We know that suddenly a day, the schools and colleges closed, students were forced to remain in the home. Reopening becomes uncertain. Today, the students, the teachers, the parents are asking us that uh, when the colleges, the universities will be open, we can say it is. It becomes very, very uncertain. And institutions have been asked to adopt alternative pedagogy, mainly through online mode. We have been asked to adopt alternative ways of teaching learning, mainly through online mode. 
Then teachers try to adopt these means. Students will try to make motivated and inspired. Yes, although most of the teachers were not acquainted with this uh, uh, new mode of pedagogy or new mode of teaching learning, although we are somehow being asked to uh, deliver or to offer the MOOCs, massive online open courses or the SOYAM courses, but in most of the colleges, in average number of the colleges, these MOOCs, course, MOOCs or the SOYAM courses were not so uh, popular or effective. But now the experience becomes very, very instrumental for all of us. Administrators were uncertain about its effectiveness as most of the teachers and students were not accustomed with these new teaching learning methods. Uh, we as the administrator or the principals of the colleges are very much uncertain how far these new tools of education uh, are risk to the people or are risk to the students who are uh, now in uh, time in different situations in different environment. In a new course in teaching learning during COVID stigma from our fundamental mind. In fact, during this lockdown period, or you may say during this period of uh, uh, where uh, teachers and students, it becomes a chance to uh, challenge for all of us to bring a new culture in teaching learning and also to get rid of our conventional mindset of face-to-face -face institutional teaching learning method being practiced since centuries long, you may say. Poor network and adverse social concerns of average students' data in flow teaching learning. In spite of our utmost endeavor, uh, utmost sincerity due to the poor network as well as adverse social conditions, as most of not most of them, many of the students, in fact, are not uh, in a position to get the uninterrupted internet or having a laptop or a smartphone to uh, take classes from the teachers uh, in a convenient way. So, in these circumstances, what we have done? At first, locking down ourselves at home considered a national responsibility. In fact, uh, we were very much busy in the month of February and March, and the new academic session was started in the schools and in the colleges after the all semester examinations. We were um, in the midst of the each semester sudden day when lockdown was declared. Uh, it became a uh, kind of national responsibility to keep ourselves at home. I waited for commands from the government or authorities. And in the first few weeks, actually, we waited for the um, uh, uh, information as well as the commands or guidelines from the government and authorities. Teachers were asked to help students from SAS, WhatsApp, or online classes with the help of Zoom or Google classes or by using e-resources. Most of the teachers were not familiar to these new tools of teaching learning, but tried to be accustomed by self-learning. In fact, uh, today, although uh, all of you are, have already attended six days of this faculty development program, and you are very much acquainted or you are very much empowered or enriched with the resourceful presentations of the resource persons regarding various tools of e-learning or uh, developing e-contents or the evaluation through online. But uh, as uh, I say uh, about the uh, average number of teachers, actually most of the teachers are not, were not familiar. Now are familiar, but were not familiar to these new tools of teaching learning, but tried to be accustomed by self-learning. Uh, the institutions, in fact, as a university administrator, uh, I'm taking the responsibility on me that we were also not uh, uh, so much conscious about training or facilitated exposure to our faculty members regarding, new, regarding these new tools of uh, teaching learning, particularly 
uh, through internet or through online, or you may say by um, using the various sophisticated electronic devices. Some students took part in these academic exercises, but not as regular and systematic practice. Actually, uh, uh, when we have taken the feedback from the students of the University, particularly the uh, university study on part of the university, uh, about 70% of the students um, have given their feedback. And from that feedback, we have seen that, uh, yes, we have to part in these academic exercises, but not as regular and systematic practice. And many of the students could not attend uh, all of the classes during this period, particularly till that. Students are in the system or customized each curriculum compatible for online. And this is a very important point I would like to highlight because, yes, uh, we are being asked to offer or conduct online classes, but our curriculum, our curriculums are not designed in that way. Now the University Grants Commission has advised the universities to because uh, uh, their curriculum they uh, assign a sizable portion of the contents for online teaching or you may say about at least 25% of the contents should be uh, designed in that way so that they can be delivered from online or through um, uh, passive mode of but, but uh, as of now as of now the students are in the system curriculum compatible for online teaching. Uh, this semester, this semester, we are uh, arranging some parts of uh, uh, for offering this course, but the system has not been compatible for uh, or has not been customized to adapt this online process in this present model. Here, alternative pedagogy. Now I'm going to some a few lines on alternative pedagogy. Alternative of what? First, face-to-face -face teaching. So that we of teaching from remote with new device. Institutional routine-based counseling to learners. Now we have a flexible timetable. We can take classes even in the evening, even in the working uh, department infrastructure. We are accustomed, we are very much familiar of working at department with definite infrastructure, with some fixed infrastructure. Now we are being asked to work from home. Pen and paper examinations and evaluation. The examination evaluation now examinations became insignificant now learning becomes more important than examinations but and more importantly in this alternative mode of pedagogy internet connectivity and devices become the most effective and the another important point to what extent we are now searching for an alternative way of pedagogy fixed pattern of teaching learning method we use pattern of teaching learning method. Um, the first plan we design, the teaching plan we design, we go to the class and we deliver our lectures. We have some notes or we have some reading materials. Now, this type of fixed pattern of teaching learning method has already been withdrawn from this COVID-19 pandemic. This is very unprecedented situation. Now, the entire teaching pattern becomes very, very flexible. Now we are the innovator of our teaching learning method. We are authority of implementing of this teaching learning method and the students are receiving learning method. Uh, this, this teaching learning uh, which are being directly delivered by the teacher or which are being directly connected by the teacher to the students without a particular institutional mechanism. Now, uh, when we are talking of the online teaching, is it passive learning? The first question is that uh, now I'm talking from this side from home. Now you are listening from your home and from your, uh, we are now um, alone, or you may say we are virtually 
connected with each other, but physically we are alone at our own home. And is it passive learning? The first question is that, is it teaching through active internet connectivity? Now, and the another important issue, always being uh, raised by the, most of the students or even some of the teachers, some of the administrators, uh, due to the poor internet connectivity, online teaching becomes very, very horrible for us. Now, is it teaching through active line or active internet connectivity only? That is another question we are, we are to address. Teaching through mobile phones or computers only? Another important aspect. Is it teaching through mobile phones or computers? Whether we have another device through which we can uh, use for learning or whether other summer conveyance tools, three tools or other gadgets which may be used for online teaching? That is another important issue. Now, then how to search eco courses available for us? How can we help our students to pursue these courses? Uh, how to search e-courses e available for us? Perhaps in the uh, previous classes, in the previous sessions, the research person has uh, uh, they dealt with the matter of uh, accessing open educational resources, OER, or how to use the Google search or other engines for finding the appropriate courses available as e-contents for us. But uh, how can we search these e-courses? E or whether we are in a position to access and consume of all these e-courses which are being available in different sources, in different uh, libraries, you may say e-libraries. Then what are e-contents? How to search e-contents available for us and for students? And uh, what are the e-contents? This particular aspect has already been passed, I think. How to develop e-contents for our learners? Now, this is a very important part for us because in this uh, present system of higher education, particularly the education system of the colleges, development of contents by the teachers themselves for the learners is not a regular practice. We basically depend on the ready-made uh, study materials which are being uh, accessed externally from other writers, from other sources, and we basically deliver or we basically give this contents to our learners. Now, another important aspect has come when we are going to talk about online testing or alternative pedagogy that is developing of e-content by ourselves for our own learners. Can offline testing be provided to our learners? An important point. Uh, yes, we are, all of we are talking of uh, online testing in this COVID pedagogy, uh, sorry, COVID pandemic situation, or uh, we are talking of uh, teaching from remote through uh, active online active uh, devices, but uh, can offline teaching be also provided to our learners? We have think of that. Uh, another important aspect I would like to touch uh, or I'd like to deal with you, who is the teacher in online teaching? In fact, a uh, few months back, uh, not few months back, few weeks back, we also organized a faculty development program and one of uh, on development of self-learning materials and e-contents uh, for the college learners. Uh, we developed, a, uh, sorry, we conducted that uh, workshop or that faculty development program. And when we basically emphasized on development of self-learning materials, uh, some of the teachers asked their uh, a question, a very, very relevant question, whether the role of the teachers will be perceived in this online teaching system, or uh, when we basically depend on developing self-learning materials or e-contents for the students, whether the role of the teacher will be uh, perceived and uh, the, uh, this uh, open and distance learning mode will be more prominent, more creative uh, in the uh, traditional system. Now, the teacher who is supposed to teach and manage the classroom controlling learners to learn what he or she delivers. In this present situation, what we see, um, 
we basically the teachers are the uh, all is the all in all or are the all in all in the classroom who delivers the contents and students are basically the recipients of the contents being delivered by the teacher now we don't have the classroom we don't have that uh, confined and ambience where we have the authority to control the entire behavior of the students. Now students are scattered in different uh, places, in different situations, in different conditions. Now it is the responsibility of the teacher how we can manage and teach our students who are living in different situations, in different places. The teacher who delivers interest of learners who inspires to seed for learning without the presence of the teachers. Now, who is the teacher? The teacher delivers an interest of the learners who inspires to seed for learning without the presence of the teachers. It means here the teacher will deliver, but the students will spontaneously come uh, to uh, come before the learning contents. I don't want to say come to come uh, screen of the uh, laptop or the screen of the mobile phone. Rather, the students come spontaneously to the learning contents and they try to grasp, they try to understand what the teacher actually intends to deliver. The teacher, the learner, the guardian at home. Who will, who will be the teacher? Here, uh, will the teacher as a learner, as a guardian? Because today what we see, the guardians are to play a very important role, particularly for the school children when they are attending the classes. Uh, attending the classes. Now, my issue is that um, whether the guardian is also playing a kind of teacher in the teaching learning process or in the co co coordination, or you may say the, uh, uh, this uh, interface between the teacher and the learner. The teacher, the learner, the guardian, and the device who provides the platform of learning. Here, the four components are being uh, connected. The teacher, the learner, the guardian, and also the device. For me, it is the culture who plays the role of an effective teacher. Now, uh, yes, we the teacher deliver our contents from our home or from our workplace, and the students are taking the classes from different places. Here, if we develop a congenial ambience at the uh, okay, at home of the learner or in the mind of the learner or even in our own workplace then all together makes the ambience of learning from remote otherwise what i see the teachers delivers from one end the learners open the mobile phone or opens the or activates the uh, this left and uh, they very casually attend the classes. So this is not the culture or this is not the professional, uh, you may say, interface between the teacher and the learner in, in the learning process through online. Teacher in online teaching here, what I see teacher is the guide and the learner is the in charge. Learner is the person in command of the entire learning process. Here the teacher develops a lesson plan with achievable objectives. Now, it is our responsibility. When we develop a lesson plan to deliver before the students through online or uh, through alternative pedagogy, what we see that in classroom, uh, if the contents, if the uh, lesson plan or the contents to be delivered to the students may not be achievable, equally achievable for all the students, but they are bound to take these classes in the classroom. But when we deliver these contents from remote, if the contents are not um, seem to be achievable for the average learners, they will quit the class and we can bring, the, bring them to the class or to take the lessons from the teachers. Appropriate resources from for uh, sorry, it's a little interviews or their device, it's in fact, techniques. 
uh, infographics, animation, explainer videos, lecture video articles, assignment, etc. Et et but the most important part is to actively monitor the progress and to bridge the gap between the teacher and the learner. Here, the teacher will guide the learner to learn by himself or herself. And therefore, the teacher needs to be approachable, needs to be connected with the learner at any time, anywhere, through any device. And both the guide as well as the in charge of the learner shall have to be ready to learn new things. And uh, in this new juncture, what we see that uh, the uh, for the teacher as well as for the learner, all this mechanism, all these developments, all this culture becomes very, very newer, very, very um, experimental. Therefore, the feedbacks, the reviews, and the comments for improvements from the recipients as well as from the delivery end should be very, very active, should be very, very responsive. Otherwise, it may be stagnant, it may be ineffective um, for both the teacher as well as for the learners. A teacher in online teaching. Uh, here, I would like to set five important points. Safety first, the device what we use However, it is safety for all of us. Routine health set task and review works. We have to uh, prepare a concrete routine. It may be flexible, but it must be accommodative. The uh, feedback, the review of the learners, it should be encouraged and be encouraged and be encouraging. This is very important. Uh, because now I'm talking through online mode, through this Zoom class, and through this Zoom meeting, here what I see that if I am not encouraged by myself, if I say that, oh, no, 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 this is not effective, I don't know what the participants are doing, they may open their laptop, may open their mobile phone, and I don't know whether they are listening or not. If I presume like that, if I develop a negative I in my own mind, if I am not encouraged of doing like this, uh, that will definitely reflect in my performance and that will definitely reflect in the mind of the learners as well as my, in the mind of the recipients as well. As, and be encouraged. And we have to be encouraging our learners. Teamwork is very, very important. Here we are working as a team. Now the host organizers are very, very active. Uh, connected in this relationship between you and me, and in this mechanism, a uh, strong teamwork is making the entire endeavor successful. Now, we will deliver our course to our students, I think, at teamwork, among or at the spirit, among the college administration, among the department, among the colleague, among the students, among the guardian, among the teacher, shall have to be there. Otherwise, only bilateral relationship between the learner and the teacher will not work as we basically assume or as we basically as we uh, expect from the system. Is definitely a very very important point. Your network, work station, and everything, and we have to realize we have to uh we say we have to, we have to uh, be responsive to the learners who are <coughs> in these classes at a remote in the environment how they are uh, struggling in their day-to-day -day life how they are facing the challenges of the time how they are being uh, uh, in this very, very adverse environment of the society. So I think we shall have to be empathetic as well as responsive, as responsive uh, before uh, delivering the actual contents of our courses. Be patient and flexible. We have to be patient, we have to be flexible. Now um, I'm talking from here. 
the network may be disconnected at any moment. We have to be present, we have to be flexible, and the students have to be taught to be to response this all this uh, or this let's say uh, this uh, unwanted or unexpected challenges to come in the near future. Online teaching in higher education, learners are at home and in different environment. Again, I would like to read this very sentence. Learners are at home and in environment. We have, um, uh, have a precondition or we have to have a, an established understanding of the learners that uh, they are at remote and in different environment and they may have that uh, adverse environment which is not uh, suitable for what you are now delivering from your home. Okay, uh, sorry for the interruption. If, uh, um, I was thinking of uh, flexible in the previous, and uh, yeah. so uh, now the test, I have given the test actually. Uh, in this present situation, what we see that uh, uh, to become patient and flexible uh, to work in a different learning environment is very, very important for, our, for all of us. Because yes, the infrastructure of the colleges, the infrastructure of the facilities uh, which are being provided by the system or even the using of this infrastructure is not uh, um, very, very easy for us. But uh, we have to develop all these capacities. We have to develop our own skill, and uh, we have to serve society as a whole. In the next slide, I would like to share these important points. We have to keep in our mind that our learners are at home and in remote, in different environment, as I have already discussed this very point. Uh, so uh, in this uh, circumstance, we have to... Uh, when we are going to provide the, or we are when we are going to offer these courses, online courses available in Soyam platform or in MOOCs, or open education resources, uh, the use of these resources, how can the okay, the way to use of these resources has been deliberated by our previous resource persons? Other e-resources accessible through internet or e-contents developed by you or and your group. This is very, very important. In fact, uh, uh, till that we are basically familiar of uh, using the contents which are developed by other fellow persons, our fellow uh, teachers of different institutions as external resources. Now we have to have that, uh, capacity or we have to uh, ourselves develop the contents which are to be developed by ourselves or our own students. And even uh, we still have to uh, develop our own skill or our own uh, that, uh, aptitude for developing e-contents or self-learning materials for, for our own students and using by the students of our fellow faculty members of different colleges or universities. Then accessibility. Yes, when we're thinking of online classes, basically of internet activity or the use of uh, laptop or mobile phones like that. But uh, as you know that the television channels may be a very significant role in delivery of process. But we don't have that kind of in our society till date. Because what we see that our television channels are basically uh, so so all the all these teaching learning methods uh, uh, we can use this and we, perhaps we have to bring that culture in our society as a whole. And it is the responsibility of the university as well as the colleges and the higher education uh, authority also to how to, uh, uh, how to convert these uh, uh, tools of entertainment to the tools of learning. But so uh, this is very important point I would like to cover here. Again, uh, online teaching in higher education here, what are the possibilities before us? The most affordable alternative possibility in, or you may say alternative pedagogy in terms of safety, online teaching is always 
being accepted because uh, in this present situation of COVID-19 pandemic, or you may say, the uh, uh, in the present challenge of physical uh, proximity of the people, we may say that uh, we have to develop an alternative way how to access, how to provide, how to offer contents to the students in a comfortable way, and how the students can access these learning contents from the teachers from a remote place. And that is the basic essence of alternative pedagogy we are talking of. And the possibility here is students friendly pedagogy subject to sending perspectives. Now, in Indian context or in our own context where we cannot assure or we cannot demand that all of our students will access online classes, all of our students will participate in online uh, evaluation system. Now we have to think of such feasible tools or method through which we can provide um, education by the teachers or by institutions uh, who, uh, to the students who are living in different places. Here, we need some sorts of basic essence that is our attitude, our know-how, our facilities, change in curriculum, change in teaching learning method, as well as change in assessment. And for the students, for the teachers particularly, what I would like to say, you, as most of you are teachers of different colleges or universities, you see, although we are uh, thinking that in this present situation, uh, the teaching learning becomes very, very inconvenient uh, so far as the face-to-face -face classes are concerned, but here you are getting more spaces, more resources, and more challenges, and even more opportunities to change a change. Here you have more space in terms of the uh, in terms of the absence of your regular routine. Now you can extend, you can expand your own routine 24 for 24 hours. Now you can have more resources from different education resources because of the formality which are being entrusted by your own institutions or your, your own university or colleges. The, um, that is, you may say, the official activities, you might not have such spaces to earn more resources from different sources. Now you have enough time. More challenge you have in a confined system where we were very much familiar, we are very, we are very much accustomed to offer our courses in a very normal situation, in a very conventional way. Now you have the challenge, you have the, uh, you have the, the, the hurdle, or you have the unprecedented future where you can find your own device, you can find your, you can develop your own content, you can develop your own innovation to provide more opportunities to your disciples. So you can see the change, what can be brought by yourself only. Uh, for that, definitely, we shall have the attitude to work hard, we shall have to earn that know-how, we shall have to uh, access the ability to use the facilities we have or we have to uh, acquire. And the institutions, the colleges shall have to uh, take immediate action or immediate responsibility to change the curriculum to accommodate these new tools of teaching learning method, this new uh, pedagogy, pedagogy demanded by this challenging situation. Even we may have to change the teaching learning method. We have to change the aptitude relating to the assessment or evolution of the students. Uh, now, in this alternative pedagogy, in Indian conditions, I basically prefer to go for a curriculum in blending mode. Curriculum in a very in a mixer mode, you may say. Uh, in our present situation, our hundred percent curriculum is based on best for or hundred percent curriculum is designed for face-to-face -face offline classroom teaching. Now, 
we have to think of at least 50% credit for offline classroom teaching and 50% through learning from remote through or through self-learning materials by the students. We have to think of that. Our University Grants Commission is talking of 25 to at least 25% uh, contents to be delivered through online mode. But for that, we have to design our curriculum. We have to develop regulation or we have to specify in the curriculum, in our courses, in our syllabi, that which portion to be delivered through online mode or which portion to be delivered. Uh, more emphasis on formative assessment through continuous and comprehensive assessment. Now, today, in this, today's, in, in this present situation, we basically are facing the challenge of conducting the end semester examinations of the various semesters intermediate semesters as well as the final semester students. We are talking of, or the University Grants Commission is uh, uh, advising the universities to develop their own mechanism to uh, withdraw or to uh, not to conduct the intermediate semesters. But as our internal assessment system is our assignment system or this comp com continuous and comprehensive assessment, which may be covered under the purview of formative assessment is not so strong, uh, which may replace the need of the end semester examination. More capability will bring or complete the courses. Now, this one of for completion of courses to be expanded. Now we are thinking of that uh, this uh, uh, 14 courses or this 18 courses shall have to be completed within this, uh, uh, you said within this uh, uh, three year of duration. Now perhaps the university shall have to think of uh, expanding this, this enough, um, enough time to complete the courses. Uh, to be partially student of a particular academic program. So that kind of flexibility shall, ha shall have to be required in near future also. Uh, for that, the universities have to read the curriculum, uh, learning the new design method, developing learning resources, self-learning materials. In the shift of all stakeholders, Tools, more flexibility in, in exit of the learners. Now we are talking that the students are to learn or students are to uh, take admission in this particular session and they have to complete these courses within this particular span of time. Now perhaps we have to think that uh, we have to provide, we have to uh, think to facilitate the students to entry in the mid of the program and to exit in the mid of the program as well or uh, to complete the course as per their own conveniences. Uh, the model I would like to propose here beyond online classes. Yes, uh, in the first part of our, of my deliberation, I basically covered, I basically tried to cover the uh, ways of uh, 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 conducting the online classes or on online mode of education as alternative pedagogy, but beyond online classes, what can we think? Because in Indian condition, uh, in a feasible, in a sustainable way, we have to think of a pedagogy or a system beyond online classes as well. Here, I would like to propose a model uh, before you for your kind of perusal. At least 50% courses developed with adequate online or e-resources and self-learning materials. The courses of a particular academic program, at least 50% of that should be supported by adequate online or e-resources. One is online course, online class, another is e-resources, which may be developed as e-content for as audio video materials, as uh, YouTube documents, or as self-learning materials like the study materials of the open and distance learning mode, where the students will be provided the self-learning materials to study at the home by themselves. And uh, with that self-learning materials, they will also learn how to assess themselves. That is self 
examination system. 50% students will come. The another, another uh, way is that 50% student will come to classes on every alternative day to ensure physical distancing in and outside the classroom. Because although the, the lockdown has been withdrawing phase wise and one day there will be no lockdown, but we cannot say that the pandemic of COVID-19 has been disappeared. So uh, I think, or we think in fact, that ensuring physical distancing or maintaining all um, health related protocols will be essential for all the students. And here, if we can develop a device, we can develop a mechanism uh, when the 50% of the students will come to classes on every alternative day and the remaining 50% students will access online or resources or study SLMs under regular guidance of the teachers. Here, the responsibility of the teachers will not decrease. Rather, that will be substantially multiplied with other responsibilities of student counseling and guidance uh, in and outside the classrooms. So for that, the basic requirements for the institutes, for the colleges, uh, for the university, as well as for the teachers will be required, adequate online or e-resources and self-learning materials for all courses, and that shall have to be developed by the teachers. Now, the universities shall have to think of developing online courses, e-resources, and self-learning materials of all courses, of the whole day by whether it may be regular mode of education or of open distance learning mode. But self-learning materials for all students will be essential in future education system. Institutes have to develop their own strategy to ensure physical distancing in and outside the classroom. The institutions shall have to develop their own strategy. Although we have a SOP, a standard operating procedure given by the University Grants Commission and other departments of the government, and we have to customize this strategy to ensure physical distancing in and outside of the classroom. And necessary guidelines for that Basic facilities shall have to be developed, basic, the protocols, and more importantly, the culture of maintaining the hygiene and health protocol will be very, very important in the near future. That will be part of our entire education system, and it will be an essential part of the alternative pedagogy, what I propose. In-depth outcome-based faculty training and workshop for self-learning material preparation, development of e-resources and training on teaching from remote. Here, I would like to cover three important points. Outcome-based faculty training and a workshop for self-learning material preparation. As the universities and the colleges will require plenty of self-learning, quality self-learning materials, the faculty members of the colleges and universities have to, uh, shall have to be given adequate training and uh, should be facilitated with um, outcome-based workshops so that quality self-learning materials can be developed by the teachers. Development of e-resources. The university and colleges shall have to develop the e-resources. And in this regard, I would like to highlight that the International Multimedia Resource Center, EMRC, this can play a significant role. The, even the colleges can the studies its own workstation for audiovisual e-content development for the faculty members. And uh, it, I think it becomes an essential part for all of the higher education institutions to develop its own workstation for audiovisual content development. Otherwise, uh, it will be very, very difficult. It will be very, very inconvenient to depend on the resources which are being collected or which are being procured from outside sources. Uh, if the teachers don't develop their own contents for their own students. And another important point I would like to highlight that is training on teaching from remote. Because we are basically familiar, we are basically acquainted with teaching in face-to-face -face mode. When, where, that, uh, where that our students are, um, our students are in front of us we have direct contact with them. Now we have to 
develop that culture we have to develop that the capacity or the skill of teaching from remote that training shall also be very very important for all of us now what the teachers can do for this proposed alternative pedagogy beyond online classes again i would like to reiterate beyond online classes what the teachers can do developing learners group within and outside the institute now as i i am a student or teacher of political science i can develop my own learners group within and outside the institute now my teaching horizon has been expanded in a very larger way now i can develop my own student group not confined within my own major students or honors student rather i can expand that group to the students of other institute as well developing clusters of peers for developing teaching learning methods or e resources or self learning materials clusters of peers for developing because now we are in a quarantine mode because all of the teachers as, as well as the students are now staying at their own home yes we are alone physically but we have ample scope we have ample space to develop clusters of peers for developing this teaching learning methods or sharing e resources or self learning materials i think discipline wise especially the wise or you may say expertise wise cluster of the faculty members nation wide is very very important to challenge this challenge of higher education because if the teachers come together to develop their own course contents which are um, uh, which are user friendly for the students i think that will mean a lot for the students for the system as well as for the society as a whole developing synergy of resource sharing learner sharing we develop a culture of synergy for resource sharing as well as learner sharing the sharing of e resources the sharing of uh, teaching learning materials the sharing of contents even the sharing of learner as it if a particular faculty member is expertise in a particular aspect he may be requested by his fellow teacher or he her fellow teacher to uh, uh, take a class for the students of that particular college so such type of healthy synergy among the resource among the teachers among the institutes among the universities will be very very instrumental to develop or to have a synergic um, outcome in this new pedagogy contributing in developing a holistic learning ambience in the society at large now contributing in developing a holistic learning ambience in fact it is now our very very important responsibility for all of us that the society is now facing in a very crucial stage now the guardians the parents are very much very very uncertain about the future of their students i think it is the responsibility of the teachers to develop a holistic learning ambience in the society at large so that that so that the society may not fall in frustration and they may not have any adverse effect in the teaching learning process now uh what may hinder you now the question is that uh you may have some sorts of obstacles what may be that i think the first approach that is share and all note method i think we have to give up that uh, traditional uh, method of sitting on the chair before the students and giving notes to the student i think that period has already been over i teach you learn approach that approach has already been i think uh, uh, nullified by this new situation now we teach we learn that approach shall have to be developed beyond classroom no room attitude we, sometimes it is a very very unfortunate experience for me that uh, uh, beyond classroom someone may do not uh, someone may not or cannot accommodate the students 
in their mind or cannot spare time for the students. I think now the teacher is 24 hours, 24 into seven. Hence, beyond classroom, no room attitude shall have to be withdrawn. Authority versus inspiration attitude. Now, the teacher, the university administrator, the vice chancellor, or even the university as a whole is not an authority, but shall have to be a source of inspiration for the learners. Otherwise, the learners will not spontaneously come to the teachers, not, um, not spontaneously come to the system and participate in a pleasant mode. Content teaching approach, that approach that have to be withdrawn from our mindset. Um, find content teaching approach. And, uh, that is what I would like to say that uh, we have an tendency that uh, I have to go complete my syllabi on time. I have to complete my course on time. So I don't want to deal other relevant issues beyond the content of what will be delivered by myself. I think in this new system of pedagogy, uh, instead of confined content teaching approach, we have to develop the holistic or the, uh, you may say the holistic program teaching approach, holistic program teaching, the program, why a student is coming to study BA, BBA, BCA, and uh, or political science or economics or anthropology or chemistry like that. So uh, that uh, holistic approach to teach the subject as a whole, I think that the approach will have to be developed and the confined content teaching approach may hinder you to be a successful teacher in this alternative mode of pedagogy beyond offline classes or even in the online classes. Uh, the participants and friends, uh, I have tried to cover many points here although in a very, very scattered way, the network is also disturbing me. Here, I think a teacher from remote, you may get strength from these points, or this may give you enough strength to be a successful teacher in online teaching, or you may, when, if you, when you adopt the alternative pedagogy in the sensing circumstances. You have in-depth knowledge of the subject, familiarity with the subject is faster, and enthusiasm to teach, ability to deploy various resources effectively, good communicating skills, being able to ask the right questions, and more importantly, listen to the students more importantly, listening to the students. Because as an uh, academic administrator of a public university, where I see our students are good, our students are talented, but they are not, they, have, they, they don't have sufficient exposure to learn new things, new contents. Now, our resource persons of the previous sessions have given the addresses of the learning resources which are internationally standard, which are of world class. So to access the world class contents, to access the contents with a high standard, we have to develop the aptitude of our students in such a way so that they can access or they can consume this learning contents in a effective way. So at the end, I'd like to sum up with these points. Let us not try to find the solution from all the experiences. Situation is very, very different. Situation is very, very new. We need to think and act differently. Let's find ways of hope together. We are bound to live, work, and help the society at larger. We have to find the ways, we have to find the rays of hope together. We are bound to live, we are bound to work, and help the society at larger. And for that, we have to struggle. Let us introspect. This is 
another important point. Let us introspect what we have done during these adverse circumstances. In the last few months, what we have done, how have we contributed, whether our contributions, our involvement in the teaching learning methods or teaching learning practice becomes effective for the students or how can we develop this? How we engaged our knowledge, our expertise and the wisdom to somehow help the mankind? How we engaged, whether uh, we kept ourselves at home to keep ourselves in safety, or have we engaged our knowledge, our expertise, and our wisdom to somehow help mankind? Let us engage in searching and researching the best feasible ways to give justice to our professional responsibilities. I think if we believe we entrust upon, if we ponder upon this principle, let us engage in searching and researching the best feasible ways to give justice to our professional responsibilities. I think many new alternatives will come up, many new feasible ways will come up, and many uh, innovations will come up from our own endeavor. Let's not be quarantined our thoughts responsibilities and potentialities. We are in quarantine, of course, but let's not quarantine our thoughts, our responsibilities, and of course, potentialities. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dibru College, and all the participants listening from different parts of the country. Uh, uh, so if you have any uh, question, or um, any feedback, uh, I'll be very happy to respond to you. And uh, if I have uh, uh, spoken beyond my capacity, beyond my uh, knowledge, uh, I apologize for you. Thank you very much. A thought-provoking conclusion to a very lucid presentation. Thank you, sir. There were technological disruptions, Thank which you. is often unavoidable because we depend on third parties. So, you know, these things are beyond our control at that time. In spite of that, sir, you have very clearly pointed out the role of teachers in these unprecedented times, <clears throat> which are extremely challenging. You talked about blended education system, which is a need of the hour, and the need to equip ourselves both academically and mentally to accept and adapt to this change. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. So there are Thank you very questions. much. There are some questions. Can I take them up, sir? Yeah, yeah, of course. So there's a question. Do you, don't you think that theoretical classes are more useful for the students in online mode than practical classes? Practical classes are better understood by the students in traditional mode of teaching. Yeah, actually that is a, that is a very pertinent question. Uh, but uh, in uh, there are some courses, there are some academic programs uh, uh, offered by different premier institutions of open and distance learning mode, where there are courses of practical uh, or application application based courses. But uh, uh, the important point is that how we design the curriculum and, and how we design the teaching method or the uh, design the structure of uh, teaching learning uh, on the basis of that, in fact, the effectiveness of the delivery of the course can be measured. Uh, for both theoretical as well as uh, application-based courses, I think online teaching mode is feasible or possible, but the important aspect is that how we design the course structure and delivery mechanism for that. Uh, in the blending system, of course, we may emphasize on the application part to conduct in offline mode and the theoretical part in online mode 
or in passive mode. Thank you, sir. We have another question. Many students do not come to the scheduled online classes. They tell it's either due to poor network or it could be due to less interest. How to attract such students? Yeah, this is a very critical question. Actually, I tried uh, to cover this very point uh, uh, in my entire presentation. In fact, it is, it is, it is the very, very challenging uh, uh, point for all of us because uh, first of all, the students are not familiar with this new type of teaching learning method. Uh, uh, because they are very much or they are very much familiar with uh, the teaching learning method where the teachers are in front of them, they learn from them uh, in direct interface with the teachers. But uh, when there is no teacher, in fact, self regulatory that calls the culture of self regulation, which is being required by a student to be present in an online class. <coughs> That's that self-regulatory, uh, you may say, aptitude so that culture self have to be developed, and this is not an easy task, of course. Uh, th that is number one point. The number two point is that we, the teachers, are also not familiar of offering online courses in an effective way. That is that is that is also a very important point. So designing a class for online presentation, the students self have to feel that this class is very very essential. Without this class, I cannot complete my course that the seriousness cell have to come in the mind of the students and that cell have to be generated by the teacher himself or herself. And this is not an easy task at all. Again, um, I think uh, we have to strive for that and we will definitely acquire the capacity. Thank you, sir. There's another question. So we have many poor students in our colleges. So an Android phone is not possible for those students to afford. How can we help those students? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm talking that point. Uh, uh, whether uh, the accessibility for uh, of an Android phone uh, for the students, average students is uh, possible or not, that is uh, one aspect. The other aspect is that, in fact, for all of the students at uh, um, in all of the uh, uh, you say the reason places accessing online classes by the students is not convenient or is not feasible in this present situation. So yes, online classes can be uh, a part of the entire teaching learning process, but we cannot solely depend on online class. I. Uh, I would like to say that because uh, yes, for this running semester, we are talking of conducting online classes and we are using a term that alternative student support. Now the Brooklyn University is going to use a term alternative student support uh, so that we can complete the courses, the remaining courses uh, by helping students by any means, by any means. But uh, solely depending on online classes, uh, course, uh, classes is not possible. Therefore, we believe that we have to develop a mechanism where we can use the common mass media, the common uh, um, common mass media for taking classes. Uh, television has enough potentiality. Radio has enough potentiality. The uh, even we can develop self-learning materials in book form like in distance mode, so that the students who are, um, uh, who may be quarantined in such adverse situations may go through these television programs, may go through the um, printed books in the form of self-learning materials, and they can complete their courses. And uh, instead of taking the classes by teacher from remote online, a phone call of the teachers, are you able to go through this course? I think a phone call will be sufficient for the students at the time. So uh, for our average students, we shall have to develop all these uh, uh, tools, which are very, which will be user-friendly, democratic, as well as, uh, uh, we may say, justifiable for the poor, you may say.
uh, another question sir is there an immediate need to develop self learning materials and e contents to make this blended learning implement at the earliest so that we can move forward instead of absolutely being in the progress absolutely absolutely man absolutely in fact there are three important aspects i would like to say first of all it is the responsibility of the universities as well as the colleges to recast their curriculum review and recast their curriculum in that curriculum we have to segregate the entire courses into two parts if we uh, provided we have to adopt this blending mode of education the first part is the first part is for offline class and the second part is for online class or the first part is online and second part is online some credit to be assigned for online class some credit will be for offline classes that is the casting recasting of curriculum the second important is uh, the courses the contents which to be delivered in uh, in online mode or you may say in uh, non face to face mode irregular mode in distance mode you may say so for that we need self learning material for that we need e contents so uh, uh, we are also thinking of conducting uh, outcome based workshop or faculty development program for developing this self learning materials for all subjects discipline wise all subjects and secondly developing of e contents is in comparison to the development of uh, what we say that self learning materials the developing of e contents is uh, to some extent easier you know perhaps the resource person have dealt the various uh, technical issues relating to the development of e contents so how to develop the concept map how to structure the contents but as i have already told you the colleges may have developed may have established set up their own registration for audio video visual e content development so the faculty members can develop their own uh, audio visual uh, contents and even the colleges the universities can reciprocally develop this e contents can share with each other if the syllabi are supportive to each other so this is the utmost priority of all institutions uh, to fight against these situations in a near future in sustainable manner yeah. and then another question sir are i are ict based classes equally helpful for the specially able students yeah in fact ict based classes are more convenient for the especially able students because uh, there are many uh, uh, customized software for especially uh, able students and this software very much convenient for them in our university also we have uh, uh, we have few especially uh, able students and they have customized they are using the customized or that special um, uh, facility in the library they uh, are facilitated with the computer facility with special provisions our uh, university we have university officers having special ability who is very successfully using the uh, software designed specifically for them so i think uh, Uh, in comparison to the traditional teaching learning methods uh, ict becomes very very convenient for the especially able students we have an interesting question sir where final exams be yeah. held as many colleges are presently being used as foreign textbooks <laughs> yeah yeah uh very very big question for me and uh, in this regard i'd like to say that uh, university grants commission have uh, recently uh, notified uh, published a notification on 6 july 6 july and uh, there was a subsequent notification on the sop to be followed that was on 8 july in 6 july notification we have been asked that universities have been uh, advised to conduct 
the n semester examinations only the final semester examinations n semester examination of the final semester examinations by september 2020 uh, that, that is the present status in fact and regarding the intermediate semesters uh, the ugc guide advises us to follow the notification of 29th april 2020 so if we follow these two notifications then we have to think of conducting the end semester examination by uh, september 2020 yes regarding the quarantine center in the colleges that is a very pertinent this is a very uh, serious issue for us and we have a task force in the university who are continuously dealing with the this trick uh, very tricky issues and here we uh, have uh, uh, proposed that in the colleges where they have the current centers if the government permits subject to the permission of the government if the government permits to conduct the examination if possible the nearby schools may be taken as the examination centers by those colleges uh, uh, so that we can ensure physical distancing among the among the candidates we can ensure we can follow all the health protocols or standard operating procedure as been given by the university grants commission and we are thinking like that in fact uh, that is quite uncertain um, although and uh, task force also very meticulously examined the possibility of promoting the student uh, yeah the university thinking like that but uh, that is of course not uh, uh, that is of course not uh, um, taken as this is an by the university okay so uh, we are thinking like that and um, but my concern is that how to start the session that is very important for uh, for all of us and uh, how to start the new curriculum or the, the uh, new session with a new approach in a sustainable manner so i think the university will be able to announce its message um, in a very short duration and uh, um, all of the participants are requested to kindly bear with us definitely sir so can i take up i'll take up the last three questions then sir yeah yeah of course of course yes uh uh if a decision comes from the authority to conduct exams of semester semester students based on online teaching and mm. classes will it not be injustice for the mm. students who have failed to attend classes online to conduct exams for them yeah uh, we are also dealing with that issue yeah the question of justice uh, is very important today but the matter is that uh, if the authority parties are to conduct the examination then uh, if we don't conduct the examination and if the academic year of the students loses then again there will be another question of justice so in this situation in this very very uh, uh, you may say critical situation what i think that uh, we have to uh, uh develop such a mechanism in the examination system itself where the examination will be friendly for the students uh we may i don't know what the university will take the decision uh there there are some developments in fact uh the uh, of course the the question paper may cover the entire syllabi but the students may be asked to a particular percent of uh, questions to appear that that may be that may be another um, uh, one aspect and another aspect is that uh, if we are to conduct the examination by september 2020 the teachers the colleges will be requested by the uh, uh, by the university to support the students particularly the final semester students to complete their courses by any alternative means so uh, somehow we have to uh, support the students in that way thank you 
broadcast. So, will it not be useful if we have a television channel only related to teaching? Yeah, it will be useful. In fact, there is there are some Gyandarsan. There is a television channel of the University Grants Commission that is Gyandarsan or Sayam Prabha. These are very, very useful, in fact. But we are not uh, accessing that. Uh, I think these are the free channels we can access very, we can easily access. But in our context also, for the colleges of Assam, you may say, for example, or state-wise, we may say, uh, we can definitely develop, the government can definitely take an uh, step for, uh, for uh, launching such type of channel, particularly for the academic purpose. I think that, that may be very, very useful. Uh, we can think of that, but for that, I think uh, we have to develop that culture to bring our students to uh, sit before the television. Um, I'll take up the last question, sir. It's almost 12. Yeah. Uh, the last question is, what is the best way to take online classes in case of courses having numericals? Since use of black and blackboard is not possible like traditional classroom situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, first of all, actually, the, uh, uh, the smart classrooms can be used for that. I think in the colleges, the smart classrooms can be used for that. And uh, uh, the colleges still have to facilitate that facility if there is if that is not available. I think uh, particularly the mathematics classes or statistics classes or the econometrics classes, uh, that smart classroom may be very, very useful. And the screen can be shared with the students uh, by that, uh, in that way. Uh, that is another way. And uh, other thing is that uh, uh, the problem solving uh, uh, procedure may be shared with the students through small videos. Uh, so I think there may be other innovative ways uh, uh, to co conducting of such classes. But first of all, the organic relationship between teacher and a student, that is more important, that is more effective, that, that will make your teaching learning more effective instead of the mechanism or device you use. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Although I said that was the last question, however, I would take back my words because I want to ask actually now a last question, which is a little different, sir. Yeah. Uh, how can a student be benefited after passing a Swayam certificate course in the UG level? Okay, that is another important point. In our present uh, Dibrugge University regulations, here the Swayam courses are uh, designed or the Swayam courses are recognized as the generic elective courses or ability enhancement or skill enhancement courses. So uh, we have some in our system, in undergraduate level, we have a, a definite course structure. And in that course structure, the students are to uh, earn minimum credit, minimum requisite credit to get the degree. But above that, the credit earned through SOEM courses will be added with the minimum credit earned by the students. And that additional credit earned by the students through SOEM courses or MOOCs will definitely give him or her benefit in future course of action. Thank you so much, sir. So with that question, I would like to wind up the interaction session. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, once again for a very wonderful and insightful presentation and for sparing your time and giving us a valuable time. Thank you, sir.